The game of the week is Batman for Game Boy. The full title of which is Batman the Video Game. Not to be confused with Batman the Movie. Uh, this game is based on the 1989 movie. Um, <laughs> so, wow, so this is the first time I've ever played this game. I did not have this game growing up. It seems pretty obvious to me that uh, this game was, you know, the movie, the movie was huge. I remember when the movie came out in 1989 and holy moly was it a big deal I don't think anybody had ever seen a superhero movie like this before like the movie this movie it had a huge impact on uh, just on the the, the the comic book media on movies it was a big deal so it made a lot of sense to have a, a video game based on based on the movie um, <laughs> I'm not sure anybody was expecting, uh, or I wasn't expecting, uh, it was basically Super Mario Brothers, but with Batman. But uh, getting past my initial surprise, yeah, this game, well, spoilers, I, I love this game. This game uh, is incredible. I think this game is incredible. It seems kind of obvious to me that they, uh, I don't know, I guess that's not obvious. They either They either had a game that they tossed Batman into, or they just had the, the basic outline, very, very basic outline of the movie and said, okay, let's turn this, let's turn this into a video game, a little Game Boy game. What are we going to do? I don't know. The game starts right off with some, uh, some really cool special effects, like on the title screen, uh, and the, uh, anytime it has this really cool flipping effect. And uh, right when and when you start any level, every time you start a new level, you get a cool uh, whoosh flipping of the uh, the whole stage. It doesn't really do anything, but it's kind of neat. <laughs> kind of because we can. The programmers flexing their skills, so that's fun. One of the first things I noticed was, yeah, this is a Batman game. And, <laughs> oh my gosh. Batman does the duck walk. Sorry, it's a little. I was just watching. So on the screen right now is uh, Batman just did the uh, the duck walk. That kind of blew my mind. That uh, yeah, Batman can do the duck walk in this game. It's not too often I see that. Uh, here I thought only Link could do the duck walk. But anyway, sorry. So uh, the gameplay in this is you know Batman runs around with his gun and shoots all the bad guys. Of course, anyone familiar with Batman will instantly recognize this as being, you know, what? What is this? Um, why does Batman have a gun? <laughs> he doesn't. Sh he doesn't carry a gun. He doesn't shoot shoot anybody. Uh, most of the time, he never kills or does never kill. I don't know. I don't read the comics. I watched the uh, Batman the animated series growing up, and the the all these uh, the movies, the eighties movies from the eighties and nineties growing up. Oh yeah. But I kind of don't care. So, okay, so I guess there's two aspects to this game. There's the gameplay on its own, and then there's the Batman theme. The, 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 the theme of the game, the feel of the game. So, in regards to the gameplay, I love this gameplay. I w was immediately hooked. You've got uh, shooting. You know, lots of games have run, run and jump and shoot. Uh, this game feels good. Uh, I'd say it's kind of up there with Mega Man. You've got good well the, the running feels really good the jumping's a little weird but I'll get into that later uh, the shooting feels really good and there's power-ups all throughout the game that will change your uh, change your weapon to right to a different weapon so you have different uh, different shooting mechanics um, now when I first dove into this game I was under the mistaken impression that you're going through the game collecting items uh, I'm sorry collecting gun weapon new weapons and kind of uh, well, how do I put it like you're cycling through weapons you know kind of like um, Contra you play through Contra you get a weapon for a little while the base weapon is good you find a power up you get a new weapon you use it for a while maybe you'll die maybe you'll switch it up for another weapon kind of like that uh, that is not the case. Oh, it also kind of felt like uh, this game also, <laughs> I don't know, in my opinion, kind of has a feeling of 
like Asteroids? I'm not, not Asteroids. What's that game? Breakout. Breakout or... Oh my gosh, what is that game called? Oh, I'm blanking on the name. Where the paddle moves back and forth on the bottom. Of the screen. Whatever, Breakout. Um, it kind of feels like Breakout in that you got a ton of blocks on the screen. Man, the, yeah, the game, the level designers just went crazy with the blocks. Blocks everywhere. And it's okay. It doesn't make any sense in regards to the Batman universe, but it's fun. Fun shooting blocks and revealing the power-ups. You can use blocks. It's a cool mechanic where, uh, you know, you can shoot the blocks and um, sometimes they'll have power-ups. You can see the ones that have power-ups in them because they're darker. Uh, there is other blocks. The white blocks are... Uh, they're just kind of there for the environment. You can you can clear them, and sh uh, once you clear them, you can sometimes hit enemies that are farther away. You can leave them and have uh, you know more platforms to stand on. It's a neat uh, a neat little gameplay mechanic. And similarly to Breakout, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, you're breaking blocks and getting power-ups from them. Okay, so I was under the mistaken impression that this game had a power-up system, like I mentioned, like from Contra. So the reality is, there are weapons in this game that are much, much better than other weapons. And I don't just mean, like, personal preference or, wow, this weapon's pretty good. There's weapons that are like, like, this, this battering weapon is pretty much the best. <laughs> But also, it took me a while before I realized the weapon upgrades in this game are permanent. When you beat a level, you keep your weapon. If you die, you keep your weapon. If you... Well, I mean, I mean that's it. Uh, I didn't test it uh, continuing. If you lose all your lives and continue, you probably don't keep it. Whatever. You'll start at the beginning of the world and have to replay a little bit. But yeah, in general, you keep your weapon, uh, you keep all the power-ups, so your weapons have, uh, what do I have right now, the Batarang level 3, so I can th shoot three Batarangs at once. Uh, and you keep them, and I really like that. Like, it's really different from a game like Contra, because I'm not stressed about losing my weapon, instead, it's about uh, finding... You, part of the challenge is coming across other other gun power-ups and getting them if they're better than the weapon I have or trying to avoid them. It's kind of interesting. There will be times when avoid... Oh, like this one right here. This is a gun power down that I want to avoid. Uh, I should have jumped over. I should have gone past the block first and then come back, turned around and shot it. That would have been smart. Oh, this game has just a couple of bosses. And they're fun. I like it. They're a lot more, uh, they feel a lot less video gamey and a lot more grounded in, uh, in the Batman universe. So that's kind of cool. Oh, so speaking of the graphics. So, I mentioned the special effects when starting the game and starting levels. Now check this out. You kill, uh, whatever, Jack, and he gets tossed, he gets f falls into the uh, the acid down below. You get an animated cutscene. So, this is, I don't know, on the one hand, this is pretty basic, but, yeah, they show you everything. You see him getting, you know, launched into the acid. You see the animated cutscene of uh, him, yeah, whatever he was just doing, being, being wicked looking. It's awesome. Uh, you know, I'm comparing this to the most recent... Uh, one of the most recent Pokemon games that came out was Pokemon Sword Shield, which was a lot of fun. But one of the big complaints I had about it was they do have so much... Uh, they tell instead of show. It's a video game. It's a visual media. They should be showing instead of telling. And so I really appreciate this. This game, uh, this game shows you those uh, things in the cutscenes. I thought that was really cool. And it looks good. Another thing about the graphics, so Batman's super tiny in this game. Uh, that ends up working out okay. Uh, the, the graphic design is really, really well done. All the, 
player sprites, all the sprites, the characters in the game, uh, all the bullets, all the platforms that you can walk on are all really dark, dark grays, with black outlines. All of the backgrounds are the lightest grays, and it makes it really easy, really, really easy uh, to make out what's going on in the screen. Even when I'm playing on the original Game Boy, it's really easy to see what's going on. The sprites are tiny, but I can still see everything. It was great. Oh. Yeah, by the way, so you get these cool, uh, these little batarang, uh, like, shields that fly around you. I was... <laughs> one of the power-ups in the game, it looks like a, like a pellet. Uh, I had no idea what it does. I had to look it up in, uh, I had to look it up in uh, the Nintendo Game Boy Player's Guide. Apparently what it does, I couldn't find it online. Apparently what it does is it, spe it speeds up the, the batarang, so it spins around you faster. So, that was kind of cool. I had fun, I, uh, oh there it is, yeah. So you pick that up and, it goes faster. Yeah, so I saw, I saw this game, like I always knew about this game's existence. It was one of the earliest Game Boy games. It was featured in the, that book I mentioned, the Nintendo Player's Guide, for Game Boy's Player's Guide. Uh, it actually, it shows the whole game in there. I got had some good tips. Yeah, pro tips from the 90s. <laughs> so that was fun to read through while I was playing it. Oh, so the gameplay... So I mentioned the gameplay, the running, the shooting, uh, the power-ups. Uh, unfortunately, the... Well, I'm kind of mixed. I'm kind of torn on the jumping mechanic. So I think any any player who's used to side scrollers will pretty quickly realize, pretty, pretty quickly notice that the jumping feels a little special in this game. It's a little different. It's kind of hard to explain. I think the easiest word is floaty. You kind of float around when you jump, which uh, really threw me off uh, when I first picked it up. It's even weirder because Batman runs. I th I'm not positive. It feels like he runs faster than he jumps. So you can be in this weird situation where you're jumping and trying to correct left and right, but then I land and overcorrect because suddenly he's moving faster. I don't know. Anyway, regardless, uh, he has this uh, floating uh, floatiness to his jump. And on the one hand, it did cause a lot of deaths that I felt weren't my fault, which can be frustrating. It did take some getting used to, it was okay. On the other hand, I really like that it feels, it's unique. It feels different from other games. It doesn't feel like Super Mario. And also it feels, uh, it feels more like Batman. It feels like he's got a cape, like he's a superhero uh, kind of floating down into the action. So yeah, I, I think I really like the controls in this game. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change anything. Oh, the music's really good. Uh, all right, so I already talked about how much I like the gameplay. Uh, in regards to the Batman feel of the game, I, I think it has a. This game has a really good vibe to it. It, uh, even though it looks. You know, it's a 2D side scroller, jumping and shooting. Uh, it could very easily be compared to Super Mario or Mega Man, but it doesn't feel like Super Mario and Mega Man. It <laughs> they did a good job uh, making it uh, like the movie. Like, what is the stage? The uh, in the museum from the movie, and that's cool. Uh, fighting off the Joker's henchmen. And uh, so with the the dark graphics. I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, with the dark Batman sprite, with the, uh, and the, the music. I think the music does a good job uh, kind of giving the Batman feel to it. It's a, it's kind of a darker action, darker action theme. It's not the peppy, upbeat music of, of, uh, of Super Mario. It's not the uh, sort of rock music from uh, Mega Man games. Yeah, it's really good. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any music from the movie. But I think I kind of like that because that music is incredible. 
Uh, but it's incredible with the orchestrated score. Or, or you know, played on, by an orchestra. I think the music in this game... It, uh... It really, if it's, if it's a, it works as a game score much better than if they just tried to put the music from the movie into the game. Ultimately, I appreciate it. I really like the music in this game. As for the level design, I was really impressed. So this game is quite short. There's only, there's four worlds. <laughs> there's four worlds with, uh, first world has three levels. Second world has three levels. Uh, the third world is a completely different game, and then the fourth, fourth world has <laughs> one side-scrolling level and then one auto-scrolling side-scrolling level. And uh, yeah, so there's not too many levels. Uh, I, I I really like the length of the game. I think it's a nice nice, nice bite-sized game, nice size for the for the early '90s. You know, there's, every time you pick up the game, you start from the beginning, which is fine. And because of the different power-ups you can get and the eh, slightly different, there's a couple different paths you can take through the level. It gives you some nice variety. So every, every game, every playthrough is not the, exactly the same, including some things, some power-ups and some little tricks and traps and enemies that uh, they're fine to play through, play against your first time playing the game. Nothing, nothing really, I mean, they're cheap, but they're not like, instant death cheap and so it didn't really make me angry it was just like haha i see what you did there developers and, but the next time as you play through it more and more because it's a game boy game and you start from the beginning you're gonna power off the system you're gonna start it from the beginning next time uh it'll give you something to uh, remember and learn about the game kind of pick it up next time you play so that's kind of cool uh the game is not too long the side scrolling levels are all Horizontal. There is no verticality in this entire game. All the verticality comes from just jumping on the different platforms. And because the Batman sprite is so small, it works really well. You got lots of lots of room to uh, to jump and maneuver. There's lots of room for the developers to make some pretty interesting level designs. So no complaints there. Oh man, World Three! So World Three suddenly changed to the uh, the Batwing level, and yeah, I love this. I, I seem to remember hearing somebody talk about it being really hard. It is hard, but like I can I can comfortably beat it. It didn't take too many tries before I was able to beat it, especially since there's not really there's no randomness. Like all the enemies, they do. There's a lot of bullets that will that'll trace after you, but there's no real randomness, and so that's good. And yeah, it looks good. I think, holy moly, I think uh, this 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 stage does shoot 'em ups better than many full game shoot 'em ups do. I had a lot of fun. You can shoot, you know, behind the bat wing, in front of the bat wing, and it's good speed. Feels good. It's easy to see what's going on. Very clear. Very clear graphics, like the rest of the game. It was a lot of fun. Oh, I forgot to mention, in regards to the level design, there are lots of good places where... There are lots of places where the designers introduced enemies in a safe way that... Uh, so the player could learn about the enemies without the chance of getting hit. It's such a simple, simple thing. But, it, you know, when a level designer, when a game developer does it right, it's not really... it's barely noticeable. And it's really appreciated. It's it's a really good level design. So I think my only uh, <laughs> my biggest complaint in this game is, or my only complaint, maybe my only complaint in this game is that that last level, the last level is so hard. I think I've heard that this uh, this game is really hard to complete. It's fun, it's a good game, but boy, is it hard to com to beat. The last level, the auto scrolling side scroller level, is so hard. It kicked my butt. It took me. I've never beat it. I, did, I haven't beat this game on the original Game Boy, full confession. Uh, I was able to beat it on a, yeah, on my computer. It took me about, oh golly, it took me over 20 tries, maybe close to 30 tries, 30 or 40 tries before uh, I finally beat the, uh, the final level, the auto-scrolling level. 
But I, I just want to play it more. I want to get better at it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the final boss is very similar to the last time you fight Jack, now the Joker. And uh, it was challenging, but I think I beat him on my second or third try. So challenging, but not impossible. And it was a ton of fun. So yeah, I, this is a game I'd heard about a lot growing up. I never played until recently. In my opinion, it's uh, uh, worthy of all the praise it gets. This is a great game. Uh, it has enough of the feel of the movie. It has enough of a feel of Batman while also being a really fun game on its own. Yeah, I recommend it.